Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake with Redefined Horizons. Gotta be a little quiet because it's 6 a.m. My wife is still asleep. 6 a.m. on a Monday. But she's carpooling with me today, so I gotta wait. I gotta wait for her to get up. So I wanted to do a, a couple training videos if I had time. So uh, this video uh, I'm doing for my, uh, my buddy Austin. He wants to learn a little bit of programming, so we're gonna teach him how to do some, some programming in C Sharp. That's a programming language for Microsoft. And uh, the project we're going to be working on is, is we're going to be working on uh, what's called a triple store database. So we're going to build a, a triple store database from the ground up. And, uh, you know, what? it's always good when, you, when you're when you going to start a software project like that to kind of have some goals in mind. So what, what we want is we want a, a fairly simple, easy-to-use uh, triple store database that runs on the desktop, that has uh, graphical tools, you know, graphical interfaces for all of its tools. Um, it's not going to be set up to run on a web server or to support connections from multiple machines because uh, that just makes things really complicated. So this is just a simple runs on a single machine um, uh, triple store database with a graphical front end kind of like Microsoft Act Access, very similar to that, only it's not a relational database, so it's not going to be a structured um, but it'll be cool. I, I, I was reading a little bit about triple store databases and the idea intrigued me and So I, I thought this would be a good project for me in Austin and uh, we'll see um, uh, You know, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can build in some native uh, GIS support geo support for geospatial data right into the database because I think that would be cool um, So yeah, we're gonna learn a lot. I'm sure uh, so what I wanted to do in this video is just show you guys how to get Visual Studio Community Edition installed. That's the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment that we're going to be using. And then we're going to go ahead and set up our project. Okay, and if we have time, we might create our first class in C Sharp. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to uh, go to uh, your web browser and just search for Visual Studio Community Edition. And then you'll, you'll get this page will come up. And actually, you can see this link down here just says Download the Community Edition. The current version is 2022. You just click this button to download Visual Studio. Okay, so I've done that. So let's go ahead and run that. So here's the installer. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run that installer. Okay, what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna pause this video while this installs because it might take a minute. Okay, guys, so after that installer runs a little bit, it's going to give you some choices here for some things that you want to be able to develop. Okay, so all we're going to need for the triple store is uh, .NET desktop development. Okay, but because I also work with Python, I'm going to go ahead and click this uh, for Python. And then I'm going to go ahead and just click some uh, Python options there. Let's see, I don't need F sharp, F sharp. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna need. I don't think I need model builder or live share. I don't think I need the entity framework. Okay, so uh, it's gonna take 7.24 gigabytes. So this is not a small install, it's a huge install. Okay, so, um, and we're, I'm going to change the location here because this will totally fill up my hard drive because <laughs> I need a new computer. So I'm going to put this on my F drive, but you guys can just probably accept the default location if you have enough room on your hard drive. Okay. Oh, it doesn't like that. Uh, it wants a folder name. And it's going to take it a few minutes because it's, it's got to download 7 gigabytes from the internet. So I'll go ahead and, and pause this video, guys. All right, guys. So uh, Visual Studio is done installing now. It gives you this little box, message box here, done installing. Okay, it says reboot to clean up any files. I'm not going to do that yet. Okay, and then it just gives you the option right now. You can go ahead and launch. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and... Do that. I'm gonna pause the video. We're gonna get Visual Studio open and uh, 
then we'll then we'll take a look at uh, how to create our first project and um, our first couple of classes. Okay, guys. So we got uh, our project open here, our triple store project open in uh, Visual Studio. And what we want to do is we want to add our first class. Okay, but just to, I want to walk you through a couple things before we do that. So. First of all, I want to show you because we started this as a, a WPF project, uh, it's already set up with a, uh, a an application window, a main window. So if we just if we come here and click the solution and hit start, it'll actually pull up. So now I've got a blank window here. You guys can see simple store, simple triple store GUI. Okay, so we don't have anything in the window yet, uh, but we'll we'll get some stuff in there soon. I hope. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys that was in there. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to start to um, add some classes to our project. Okay, so classes are kind of the unit of code, the building block, the main building block, code building block that you use to design an application. Okay, and and uh, I'm going to be I don't I don't code a lot in C sharp. I'm mostly a Java coder, and so I will occasionally probably have to pause and and figure out how the right way to do some stuff in C sharp, but. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on Simple Triple Store and I'm going to add, uh, we're going to come down here to add and I'm going to add a folder, okay, and then I'm going to just call this folder core, okay, because it's going to have our core classes. So what we're going to do in our code is we're actually going to separate kind of the core classes that form the, the triple store from the, the classes that actually present the, the graphical user interface. That's just a good design. Um, good good architecture pattern to follow when you're creating applications because we may end up in a situation where we want to um, uh, share those core classes as a library so other developers can do things with them or we may want to experiment with some different different graphical user interfaces okay so we're going to call that core and uh, we're going to go ahead and add our first class so we're going to come down to add and we're going to say add we're going to add a new class okay and we're going to add a, a C sharp class. Okay, right now the name is class C1, so we're just going to actually call this triple store. Okay. And we'll go ahead and add that. Okay, and you see it opens up here in the uh, in the window. Okay, and it just comes with this default uh, namespace here, which I'm actually going to change. So we're going to call this uh, redefined horizons um, and I don't know if, if underscores are the, the naming convention but we're gonna roll with that for now so dot triple store okay, dot core um, so the namespace is kind of like a package in Java so it's it's gonna keep uh, it's it, it, it's a it gives the all the classes within this um, within this uh, namespace a unique identifier right so that our triple store class won't get mixed up with a with a triple class score from a different library I really hate those underscores I'm gonna try it without underscores <laughs> all right so we've got our class here uh, it, it's triple store it's just got a blank uh, definition so the definition is gonna go here within the brackets I'm not sure what this internal keyword does so let's just Google that C sharp internal keyword. Uh, so let's see C sharp internal keyword. What does this do? The internal keyword is an access modifier for types of members. Uh, internal types of members are accessible only within the files in the same assembly. Okay, so the assembly is that is the the unit that your code gets packaged into. Um, it's it's like a DLL, so it's like the this is like the protected keyword in Java, and um, for now I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that. We just have to remember that um, if we turn this into a library that other programmers use, we'll need to get rid of this internal uh, for other people to be able to use the class. Okay, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. Okay, and and uh, so what we want to do now is we want to define our class, and um, I like to just uh, put in a comment here, and we're gonna say. Uh, member variables okay so that's just the data that the triple stores is, is gonna hold and then um, we're gonna put in here public methods okay um, and 
I, you got to remember, I code like a like a Java programmer, so uh, we we may actually. I think what we're going to do is we're we're maybe going to make these properties. So I'm going to say I'm going to say uh, member properties. Okay, so a property in in C sharp is just a, a data a piece of data in a class. So a, a class is a template for an object. An object holds data's data values and and methods that work on the on the data values. So um, I think we want to define some properties here, so let's just see if there is a way to do that in um, in Visual Studio. I don't see a way to do it. Let's just see if we make if we say uh, private string, uh, and we're going to call this um, primary value. And then we're going to say private string secondary value. Okay. So we're just we're declaring some some values, string values, or string of characters or text values. Okay. Now I just don't know if I highlight these, I might be able to turn them into a property. So let's just see. Generate constructors. Okay. So right here it says encapsulate the field primary value and use property. Okay, and that's what I want to do. So um, it just gave me uh, a property now. Okay, so uh, so people will be able to see this. Uh, people will actually be able to see this uh, property. Okay, and so I'm going to do the same thing here to this other property. Actually, I'm not because you know what? I need to know what the C sharp convention is for naming properties. So let's come over here, and we're just going to grab C sharp naming conventions. I'm going to try and try and follow the conventions. Okay, so let's see what the C sharp naming convention is for. Uh, okay, so private field is a lower uh, lower camel case. Okay, so we're actually going to get rid of these underscores. So it starts with a lowercase letter, and then the next word has an uppercase. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to uh, redo this now because this isn't going to work. So we're going to just say. So we're going to want two properties. Okay. And I'm whoop. And I'm going to um Okay, so we just turned our um, these two private values into properties. So I'm actually going to rename this. So we're going to call this private member variables. So these are the values that are stored privately in the class, and then we turned them into properties. So I'm going to just say public properties. Here. Okay, and if this doesn't make sense, don't panic. I'm going to explain how these work. We're going to we're going to whip up some code, hopefully, and we'll see how these things work. Okay, so so let me uh, let me open up our our triple store. Um, example of our triple store data uh, and then we'll uh, we'll explain what some of these things are because what we're doing right now is we're designing a class that's going to represent one entry one one entity in our triple store database okay so I want to show you guys okay so here's our example data set for our triple store okay and uh, we're, we're actually just going to read we're going to read this data file we're going to write code that actually reads this data file so the primary value here uh, is the first entity in the triple store relationship. So in this case, it's building 155-62. One of the rules in our database is going to be that the primary value has to be unique. Okay, and then over here, this is going to be the relationship between the primary value and the secondary value. And then this over here, this is going to be the secondary value. Okay. So uh, so those are the those are the, the the deals we have there. Okay, now, um, we've, so we've got these two properties, but we need to add one more. So we're going to add private string. Okay, and we're going to call this the uh, the relator. Okay, the relator is is going to be what relates the primary value to the secondary value. Okay, and then uh, we want to make that property too. Okay, so we'll come in here. And say make that a property okay so 
I've got these three private variables now and three and then we've exposed them to outside the class as properties okay so right now we have uh, we've, we've designed a class if it's objects of this class will hold the primary value the relator okay and then the secondary value now we, we want the secondary value uh, to be able to we want it to be able to have a, um, a data type and we actually want the uh, we a we actually want the, um, the the primary value to be able to have a data type too. Okay, so we're gonna um, so we're gonna store the information as strings in the class, which we've done here. Okay, and the reason we're doing that is because uh, we just want the the code to read and write these values uh, to the text file to be simple. So we're gonna store everything as strings, but as an example, um, you know, if, if we have a value here, so for example, number of levels or number of stories is one, uh, we actually want to be able to access that as a number in C sharp. But we're going to store the value as a string in, a, in our basic data, data value class here, the triple store. Okay. Um, but we want to be able to work with it as a number, and, and we'll see how to do that. Okay, and I actually realized I want to rename this class. So this is going to be, we're going to call this a triple store entry. Okay, not, not a triple store. Okay, so let's rename this. Okay. So this is a triple store entry. Okay, so it just represents one value. Okay, so you can see here if I expanded my solution explorer, now it's showing me these private values and these properties. Okay, so that, that's cool. All right, so the other thing that we want to do is we want to store some information about the data type. So we're going to say private string. Okay, we're going to say primary data type. Primary value data type. Okay, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to have that be a string because that could be anything. So for example, that's going to be dependent on the database. So this is going to be a building data type. Okay, so but the, the user of the database is going to set those those uh, data types. Okay, but this we're going to limit the type of data that that can be used for this uh, for the for the secondary value. Okay, so <clears throat> I think I want to use an enum for that, and so I got to remember how to define an enum. So an enum in C sharp is just allows you to choose from a set of values. Okay, because um, we don't want to just leave this the secondary value of any type of of data. We want to limit it to a set of data types that are that our code is going to support. Okay, so here it is. This is how, this is how we do it. Pretty simple, right? Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try this. I think we want to make our enum public. Okay, so we wanna we want to be able for, we want people to be able to see it. So I'm gonna just put public enums here in a comment, and we're gonna say public enum. Okay, and then we do our two curly brackets, and I like to have my brackets down here like this. And so uh, we're going to support the following data types. We're going to support a string. I can't remember. Do we need a comma after that? Uh, yep. Okay. So we're going to support a string, which is a text value, a date, which is a date value, a boolean, which is a true/false value. Okay. Um, we're going to support an uh, integer. Okay. And a uh, decimal so integer number and a decimal number okay and then because I'm a land surveyor we're gonna we're gonna start we're gonna support a location value okay which we haven't defined yet okay but we will so we're gonna we're gonna need to define a location class okay something's wrong oh I got to give my enum a name so we're gonna say triple store actually we're gonna say secondary value data type now, I uh, feel pretty good about this class so far, okay? but um, what I'd like to be able to do is uh, we need to be able to tell, so in our triple store, if we come back in here to our example data, we want to be able to link to uh, one entity to another in, the, in a triple store entry. So right here, uh, Landon Blake could actually be a, an entity with its own set of uh, relationships, or you you can see down here we've got building one fifty five six two 
is next door to, and then we've got another another building. So we want to be able to indicate that the secondary value in our triple store entry could actually point to another primary value. Okay, so we're going to just um, we're going to put primary value in here. I'm just going to call it primary for now. Okay, but I'm also going to give it a um, it's going to add a boolean, just a true true false value. Um, so let's just do that. So we're going to say private bool. Okay, and we're going to say um, has two primary values. Okay, so if this is true, that means the secondary value in our triple store entry is also another primary value. So you're going to see that's going to allow us to, to kind of build trees of data, uh, which we're going to want to do. And then uh, what we want to do is we're going to turn this also into a property. Okay, so okay, so now we've got the three properties. You can see they're being added over here in the outline view. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save that. Um, we don't have any issues in our code right now, so this is, this is uh, looking fairly good. Okay, but we need what's called a constructor. Okay, so we need a we need a way to create uh, one of these entities. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. So a constructor is a special type of method um, that lets you build an object of this class. Okay, so we're going to say public constructors. Okay, and um, I don't know how those work in in C sharp, but I'm going to guess here that it's like Java. So we're going to say public um, triple store. Entry. Okay, and then we, we've got to pass it the values that are going to be needed. Okay, so we need three values. Uh, maybe, nope, we need four. So we're going to say string. Um, we're going to say string, and then I like to put arg in front of my variables. So arg primary value, string arg relator, and string. Uh, arg secondary value. Okay, and then um, okay, and then the last thing we want to put in here is we got to indicate uh, what what type of data the secondary value is. So we're going to say um, secondary value data type. Okay, arg data type okay and then now we, we want to go ahead and set those okay so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and allow those to be set okay so we're gonna say um, this so that this is a special keyword that that um, refers to the object that we're, we're, we're defining here so I want to set my own I want to set the primary value of this object to the primary value that we're passed and you guys are gonna see how this works in a minute and Visual Studio is smart enough to see that I already want that um, so that's cool so it's just gonna whoop, it's just gonna walk me through those so this helps you be more productive if I go too fast I get past my uh, Pass my my prompt there. Okay, and I noticed I didn't name this consistently. This should say arg relator value. Okay. All right, and then uh, we we need to set our enum. So this. Oh, you know what? I don't have a spot to store the enum, so we need. So this defines the enumeration, but we need a spot to actually store it in our class. Okay, so we're going to say private um, secondary value data type, and then we're going to say my yeah secondary value data type. All right. Okay, and uh, you know what? I decided I'm going to put my in front of these just because that'll help me understand what I'm dealing with a private variable inside my class. Um, but that's going to cause some errors here, but that's okay. 
my later my time and my has. Okay. So now I gotta change these names down here. So, and I'm actually going to um, define another constructor here uh, that just creates a blank object, a blank triple star object that you can then set your values on um, here in just a second. So we're going to say <coughs> equals our data type. Okay. So this is the constructor that lets you pass in the values you want, but we're also going to just create a constructor that just lets let you create a blank. doesn't take any variables it's just going to create a blank object okay so we're going to save that now okay so we've got a class that stores our our three values and also stores uh, the data type of the um, of the secondary value. Now, I think what we might do is we may come back in and also um, uh, enable our code to set the the type of relator. So we may also have types for relators, uh, but but for now we're uh, we're not going to do that. Um, you know what? I realized I don't have. We're not using our we're not using our primary value data type. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to add a couple. We're, we're, let's just do that right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and my secondary value data type. I'm going to make this a property too. Okay, and then um, sure why but it did this this one property it did a little bit different so because I just want it to be public so I might have clicked on the wrong button so we want this to be public um, Type is going to be secondary value data type. Okay. All right. So what we don't have here is we don't have a data type for our. Uh, we don't have a data type for our relator. And we also don't have. Uh, we don't have the primary data type. Uh, supported in our constructor down here so let's do that so we're going to say we're going to rename this to secondary data type and then we're going to say uh, primary data type is just a string right so string arg primary data type okay so then this has got to change okay and up here we're going to say this dot my primary value data type equals yep okay so this just got renamed to my okay so <clears throat> what we want to do now we're just going to go ahead and add our relator data type uh, we're going to add our relator data type just to make these variables make a little more sense here so I'm going to put this down here Okay, so we're going to say private, and that's also going to be a string, my relator data type. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and encapsulate this with a, pro a public property. Okay, and let's 
see here. So we need to add that to this constructor here. Say uh, string arg my relator data type. Okay, so then we'll add it here. So now we're supporting the relator data type. Okay. Um, now what we want to do in our code though here is when we pass in the secondary data type to this constructor, if the secondary data type has a value of primary, then we want to set the boolean my has two private values to true. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to say we're going to try and do that with an if statement. So we're going to say if arg secondary value data type equals secondary value data type primary then we want to set the value of my has two primary values to true Okay. If that if it's anything else, we want to set the value of that variable to false. So we'll do that with an else statement. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna do this one more time here. So let's just put a comment in here so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna say um, if the <coughs> secondary value of this triple store entity entry is also a primary value and then let's say could be could be a primary value in another entry set the boolean flag to true Okay, now we want to we want to do that again. So we're going to make another uh, we're going to make another um, special boolean here. Okay, so I want to also indicate if this is uh, a geospatially enabled record because I'm a land surveyor. So we're just going to build that into my database. So I'm going to say my. Um, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this. I don't like the my on the front of this. This doesn't make sense, so I'm going to say we want to rename this. Can we rename? Is there an easy way to rename this? I'm trying, I'm getting to know Visual Studio a little bit here. Rename, there we go. So we're going to just get rid of the my here. Okay, and so this one we're going to say is geospatial. Okay, we could also say has location, uh, but we're just going to say is geospatial. And what we want to do is turn that also into a property. Okay, and again, the properties just make this value here, this Boolean value, um, visible outside the class. Okay, so now we, we want to make sure if somebody passes us a value and the secondary data type is location, we want to set the, the Boolean flag, the true-false flag, to indicate that this is a, a geospatial entry. So we're going to say if the secondary value of this triple store could uh, is a location, uh, set the, I'm going to say mark this entry as geospatial. So let's try and tune up this comment again to get a little bit. Mark this entry as having two primary values. Okay. All right. So so we're gonna we're gonna do a similar thing here with some if statements. So we're gonna say if 
arg secondary data type is equal to uh, our a secondary value data type location. So if that's true, what do we want to do? We want to say this dot has, oh sorry, is, is geospatial equals true. So then we're going to set that flag to true. Otherwise, we want to set that flag to false. realized I misspelled geospatial, so let's go fix that. So we can do that up here. We just highlight this and go to rename. We'll try and spell stuff right. Okay. Okay, so let's just review what we have in our class here. So we're storing the primary value, okay, which is this part of the triple store entry. We're storing the secondary value, okay, which is this part of the triple store in, uh, entry. Okay, we're storing the relator value. That's the relationship between the primary value and the secondary value. And then we're storing the data type of the primary value, the data type of the secondary value, the data type of the relator. Okay, and then we're setting two Boolean flags, true false flags. We're letting the, we're letting the, the, the software know, um, is this geospatial and geospatial entry? So does it have a location as the secondary value? And um, does it have a secondary value that could also be the primary value of another entry? Okay, and so that's going to help us build kind of our tree graphs when we, when we get into some more of the software. Okay, so what we have now uh, is we've got a pretty good class with no errors uh, that represents one entry in our database. Okay, now as soon as possible, we, we want to integrate some, some visuals into a, some, a graphical user interface into our code so we can start testing our code and clicking some buttons. I think that's going to be really important. That's how I like to... to to code stuff, but we need, I think we need at least one more class to do that. So we need a class that actually represents the triple store itself. So that the entity that holds these values, and we're gonna, it, it, that class is gonna grow more complex with time, but to start, we're gonna keep it super simple. Uh, so we're gonna do uh, one more video. We're gonna code up that triple store class, and then uh, we'll do a third video probably where. Uh, we're going to actually try and wire that up to uh, to our graphical user interface and see if we can create and store a uh, triple store entry in a triple store um, in, in our code using our graphical user interface. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, um, and uh, we'll we'll do some more videos on this.